This is the Ghost Guy, or Ghost Guy, or Mautech 13 to 40 power by 50 millimeter spotting scope. It's one of the best selling and best rated compact budget spotting scopes on Amazon, and we're going to see if it deserves that reputation. This is the box at the Goski 13 to 40 by 50 uh, angled spotting scope comes in, and it's a rather plain looking cardboard box, nothing spectacular about it. So let's open this up and see what we get. Alrighty, for our troubles, we get a, ah, oh, here is the camera adapter. Nicely made. A combination of, uh, appears to be coated aluminum and plastic. The These are really handy for taking footage, and I will be using that for our in-scope footage later. You get a carrying bag made of uh, nylon inside. We have our scope and ah, there is a divider, a fabric divider, and we have a tripod underneath. Take a quick look at that. We'll have a more detailed look a bit later. Feels like, yeah, this is a pretty, pretty inexpensive, um, a pretty inexpensive tripod made of uh, aluminum and plastic. Doesn't feel quality at all, but you know, we'll see in more in depth how well this works. But let's look at the scope, which I and I'm sure all of you are more interested in seeing. Here it is. And it's interesting, it's Goski um, Mutek, but it doesn't say Goski on the outside, so that's just a little odd. Uh, it says Rally 50mm air spaced duplet, and it has caps, and it has a built in sunshade on the ocular lens, or sorry, the objective lens, ocular lens, and this is the um, magnification here and the focus. There you go. Roughly, let's see here. We have each of these squares is uh, one inch, uh, one inch. So we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. About eleven inches from here to here, and uh, about one, two, three, four, five, six inches. Tall. So fairly relatively compact. I believe the Celestron Hummingbird is a little bit smaller, but um, this is what I was looking for. Something s small and compact that didn't take a lot of, of space. I could conceivably put this inside of my range bag and toss it into uh, the back of the car to go to the range. I didn't want a larger, I didn't want a larger spotting scope. So there you go. Anyway, we'll take a more detailed look through the actual um, eyepiece and uh, see what um, kind of optical quality we get. This is the view at the scope's widest and lowest power setting. The chimney is 25 yards away, the tree is 50 yards away, and the radio towers are 5 miles distant. Cranking up the eyepiece to 40 power, I still got pretty good contrast and detail on the pine tree 50 yards away. Pretty good for a budget scope. This is a short to medium range spotting scope. The manufacturer says that this is optimized for objects within a thousand meters. These radio towers are significantly further than that. Taking it out on a bright sunny day, I tested it on the peak of Mount Davidson, the tallest hill in San Francisco, 1250 yards away. At 13 power, we got decent color saturation, though with a noticeable warm tint. Cranking the eyepiece up to its maximum 40 power, I lost light, I lost brightness. Um, but it did maintain its uh, color saturation and um, had pretty good detail. 
I could see details like uh, the separation between the shingles on the rooftops uh, a thousand yards away. In this photo still, you can clearly make out the silhouette of the hiker on the ridge trail 1,250 yards out. I took it to the rifle range and tested it out on a target 100 yards out. My main purpose for a compact spotting scope is to use it to spot targets uh, out to about 100 or sometimes 200 yards out. Now, the trick is that I'm shooting mostly 22 long rifle and 5.56, which are very small holes, and at 100 yards, impossible to see with a naked eye, or at least my naked eyes, and very difficult with a 9 power rifle scope. At 40 power, the scope offers enough clarity and detail to make out the bullet holes on the target. Now looking through the eyepiece, and as you can see in this photo still, I could clearly make out the 22 bullet holes on the white of the target. Not so much on the black of the target, uh, but I'm sure I could make those out if I used uh, stick-on uh, reactive targets. Looking at overall clarity and sharpness, uh, using the U.S. Air Force's optical resolution chart, I could make out detail down to about element 3 in the negative 1 group at this distance. And while the overall image has a slight warm tint, I was pleasantly surprised at how little chromatic aberration there was at maximum magnification. There's only the barest purple fringe at the very top of the white target frame. For a sub hundred dollar piece of glass, that's pretty darn good. Okay, before I get into the good and bad and what I really think about this scope, I want to invite you to check out and subscribe to Moondog R&D. That's my new YouTube channel where I review gadgets, gears, and electronics, and generally things I think you'll find interesting. And speaking of interesting, you're still watching, so you must find this a little bit interesting. If so, please hit that like button and consider sharing and subscribing this channel. Let the AI know that you like content like this and you'll get served and suggested more content that's interesting interesting to you. So, win-win. Okay, first off, let's talk about the name, or names. Is it Goski or Goski? Because that's how it's spelled on their website and most of the marketing materials. But looking at their logo, and they've got more than one, there's a couple of spellings where it's a capital S, which leads me to think it's pronounced Go Sky, which makes much more marketing sense to me if that's the name of the brand here in the US. But printed on the scope itself is the brand Mautech, which makes more sense considering where this scope is made. Now, confusing brand names aside, I actually found this to be a decent spotting scope. I mean, in the $50 to $100 range, that's really super budget tier. It's got a pretty good eyepiece with a large ocular lens and decent eye relief so you can use it with eyeglasses. The zoom ring turns smoothly, but more importantly, it turns independent of the lens itself. So you can attach a camera adapter and change your magnification. But an even bigger surprise than how well the scope performed was the tripod. At first glance, it looked amazingly cheap. I mean, just the design and the construction, there's so much plastic, especially in the tripod head. But that's where there's a hidden gem. It has a geared micro adjustment knob for elevation, a feature I've never seen in a budget tabletop tripod. I would recommend this kit just for this feature alone. But of course, there's also the optics. They say the difference between a high quality optic like a Leupold or a Koa is that you can see at low power of details that you couldn't see at high power with a cheaper optic. Obviously, this is not a top tier optic, because at 13 power, I couldn't even tell there were bullet holes on the target, much less where they were. But at full power, we can see where the bullet holes are on paper, so for a sub $100 budget scope, yeah, it does the job. So if you think so too, and you want to pick up one of these bad boys, I've included a link in the video description, so you can pick one up yourself on Amazon. Please use that link because, uh, you know, this channel does get a little bit of a commission when you do purchase using that link. And it doesn't cost you any more than if you didn't use that link. So please use that link. Or if you don't think it's worth it and you have a better suggestion for a spotting scope in this price range, leave me a comment. And finally, if you found this review to be helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll be reviewing other spotting scopes soon, so hit that notification bell and you'll be notified when I post it up. Thanks for watching. Moondog, out. 
Hey, if you like this video, please share it on social media. You know, Facebook, forums, MeWe, whatever platform you're on. And if you want to see more videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com. Thank you.